What's going on, Vags? Welcome to another episode of Storage Unit Show and Tell. And by another episode, I mean the first and probably the last one. Um, I was in my storage unit today and I was uh, digging up an old analog video scaler um, that uh, has a composite and S video input and then outputs VGA resolutions. Um, and I was digging that out because I, I'm, I'm digging around with a with a CRT monitor right now, and I, I just wanted to fiddle with it, so I wanted to play around with it. Anyways, while I was um, digging that out, this happened to be in the same tub where I keep my, my scalers and my AV junk, and I, ha- I had forgotten I even owned this. Now, I bought this about maybe 11, 12 years ago, um, right as uh, 3D TVs were sort of entering the market. Now... Um, Right before our 3D TVs were introduced, um, there was the digital cutover for uh, over the air, where uh, in the United States, we went from analog over the air broadcast, switched over to digital so the government could resell some of that spectrum. And at that time, a lot of people uh, went ahead and took that as the opportunity to um, upgrade uh, from their old analog CRT2 TVs to the HD TVs. Now, when that happened, you know, millions of TVs were sold and um, the manufacturers sort of got, got greedy. They got used to the the, the sale of, 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 you know, that many TVs. And when that dried up, when everybody that was going to buy an HDTV went ahead and bought it, sales dried up. So they needed something to re-spark um, good old-fashioned consumerism, right? So uh, they came up with uh, 3D at home. So they started pushing 3D TVs. Now, if you had just bought your brand new HDTV two years earlier, uh, you know, the thought of having to upgrade yet again after you just had your CRT for 20 or 30 years, you know, that might rub you the wrong way. So maybe you like the idea of 3D at home, but but, uh, you didn't want to, you know, drop another $2,000 on a brand new TV. Um, That's where this comes in. Now, this uh, was sold under a number of uh, different um, names. I remember at the time, sort of seeing a number of these boxes, all looked identical, but they were branded differently. The one that I happen to have is called the 3D Video Wizard, and I bought this on Amazon. I don't recall how much I paid for it. Like I said, this was over a decade ago. Um, But I don't think I would have paid more than $100 for it. Um, So what this did was that uh, you would connect your 3D Blu-ray player, or like I did, my, my PlayStation 3, um, you would plug it into one of the two inputs in the back, and then it would convert that 3D Blu-ray or video game signal. Um, it would convert that to anaglyph. Now, anaglyph 3D has been around basically since as long as um, you know movies have been around. And traditionally, uh, when we talk anaglyph 3D, they would be using these red and blue or red and cyan, technically, uh, 3D glasses. Now, what they did here is that they went with blue and amber. And I remember doing a little research at the time as to why they would have done this. Now, they claimed that uh, this 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 provided better um, uh, separation of color so uh, you wouldn't get as much crosstalk, right? A lot of marketing terms were used at the time. But I'm convinced that the only reason why they went with the blue and amber over the blue and or red and cyan is um, is just because these are readily available. These have been around, like I said, since the beginning of cinema, and you could buy these cheap. Now you could buy them in plastic too. I remember at the time uh, looking up on Amazon, and you could get two pairs of the red and cyan plastic glasses for like eight bucks. But these I could not find on Amazon, even though I bought this box on Amazon. And, and it did come with these two glasses. But if you wanted uh, to add more glasses, um, you know, maybe you have a family, uh, you would have to go to the manufacturer of the 3D vis- Video Wizard, and you would have to pay them $28 for two pairs of glasses, which is, of course, absurd. Um, but anyways, like I said, these were not a- around all that long. Uh, they, 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 they sort of uh, fit into a very small niche of people who wanted 3D but weren't willing to upgrade to a, a, a new 3D display. And it did other things. I mean, it didn't do other things. All it really did was just play 3D anaglyph video. But if you, you could feed it side by side, which is a common format, 
or top down um, 3D video, and it will convert that. And it would also convert standard 2D uh, video to 3D, but it did that pretty poorly. But I do remember using this quite a bit uh, when I would play Killzone on the PS3, because um, that was a game that supported 3D. And, you know, you would put on these super dorky glasses and I would sit in front of my monitor and I would play some Killzone in 3D, in Anaglyph 3D. Anyways, I forgot that I had this. I stumbled upon it, like I said today, when I was digging out the scaler. And I thought, you know, this is kind of quirky, a little offbeat. I don't think a lot of people even knew that these things existed for a small period of time. So I figured I'd shoot a quick video and put y'all up on game. All right, guys, I will let you guys go. I got to go pick up the kid from school, so I will check you guys later.